<laughs> Let me welcome in Mark Matthews uh, from Julius Fair, who's also joining us today. Mark, uh, well, let's talk first about the setup and how we've actually seen um, uh, all that action on the 10 year yield. Uh, in terms of the global backdrop, uh, to get a sense of that from you, you know, how volatile do you feel it's looking currently? The DXY also starting to uh, uh, see some gains on the back of a little bit of nervousness with regards to the impeachment. Well, I would address the impeachment first to say that it is noise and uh, to the extent that it's it's market significant, the noise kind of uh, sucks energy out of uh, Congress, which should be focusing on uh, getting a big stimulus package through. So uh, the consequence of if Trump is actually um, uh, if the if the Senate trial proves that he is guilty of inciting insurrection, uh, is that he will lose his uh, privileges that ex presidents get. But there's no consequence beyond that. So um, impeachment, uh, I think uh, we don't need to focus on that. But there's a push and pull in the market, as always, between um, you know uh, a strong recovery, inferring inflation, and therefore interest rates going up. And at the same time, uh, uh, dovish central banks trying to keep interest rates down. And uh, my sense is that right now, uh, the uh, the especially with the big third wave of COVID still present in the U.S. and Europe, um, that uh, that we're not going to get a, a, a sharp rise in uh, in the Treasury yield. Um, uh, but I think we can look toward about one and a half. Uh, and uh, perhaps even upwards of one and a half, maybe uh, between one and a half and two by the end of this year, um, which in the historic context, I guess over the last 30 years, the uh, treasury yields averaged probably um, more than twice that off the top of my head. Um, it, it's not enough to derail stocks, especially when you're looking at uh, very strong uh, earnings growth this year. You know, everyone's been worried about inflation, but it doesn't look like we're going to see signs of inflation for a while. What's your sense? Because in the absence of that and continued low rates, uh, you know, isn't it natural to assume that the party is going to continue for some time? Uh, clearly, the biggest mystery of the last 10 years is the absence of inflation. And therefore, I don't know how to uh, predict it. Um, but what I can say is that uh, the uh, major force responsible for the suppression of inflation, uh, in my humble opinion, being technology, is still very much with us. And, um, you know, for example, if I'd had an interview with you in the past, I would have had to take in a taxi to go to a studio, and, and uh, that would have all cost money. There were middlemen involved, and uh, and now we're doing it, um, you know, remotely. So, so this uh, continued acceleration of digitalization uh, is, I think, what's going to keep inflation low. Um, and uh, and and even if it does go up, the Fed has told us that it's now willing to accept. In fact, it even kind of welcomes uh, an inflation rate of uh, in excess of two percent and let the economy run hot for a while. So uh, I don't think we're going to get big inflation, even if we do. Um, I don't think uh, the response of the central banks would be uh, the same as it would have been in the past. Fair point. Mark, uh, but given that in 2020, financial markets moved up in anticipation of economic recovery, and even if economic recovery happens as projected in 2021, what are the chances that we could see a situation where economy picks up and markets don't go anywhere? A complete mirror image of what we saw last year, where economy contracted and markets go went up. Could it be reversed this year? It's entirely possible. In fact, a lot of people think that um, a strong economy and a strong market uh, do not go together. In fact, uh, when you get a strong economy, usually you uh, don't get a strong market because um, the central banks are tightening. And uh, probably governments also realize they don't need so much fiscal stimulus. Um, this year, I think, is unusual. And 
uh, the central banks are willing to step aside and, and let the economy run hotter than they normally would. So we're forecasting uh, U.S. GDP growth of 5.1 percent this year and then another another 4.6 percent next year. And even so, we don't pencil in any tapering until uh, about the middle of next year. And the first F Fed funds rate hike, we don't pencil in until uh, 2024. So um, I want to say that you are right, however. We, we might end up getting um, a more of a sideways year than a strongly up year uh, because Last year, uh, the stock market already built in a lot of expectations for the recovery that we will have this year. So maybe uh, the upside is more within sectors that um, hadn't moved much previously. Um, in other words, I'm sure you know what I'm referring to, the, the cyclicals, the value, the commodities, that kind of thing. Um, there is uh, wind in their sails, and I think it will continue to be the case Um uh, in in the current environment. Mark, uh, I've never seen such a love and hate relationship for an asset class. There are folks on the street who just love Bitcoin and there are folks on the street who just hate Bitcoin. Are you part of the lovers club or the haters club? I'm agnostic. Um, luckily, my company does not allow me to comment on Bitcoin. And I'm glad they don't because um, it's very difficult to express an opinion. Um, I would just say it has gone up an awful lot. And that's really all I can say. I apologize. Fair point. Appreciate that. Mark, what to your mind are the red signs in the financial market? I mean, Bitcoin for sure, we feel is one. But apart from where, apart from Bitcoin, where else do you think financial markets are getting in the dangerous, overvalued, overowned, overcrowded zone? Well, it's it's been, um, I think we can safely say, a bubble for quite some time in many pockets of the uh, technology sector. Uh, Tesla has gone up over a thousand percent in two years. Um, that's a much bigger rise than the stars in the dot com. Uh, you know, the technology, media, telecommunications bull run of the late 90s. Um, those ones, uh, I mean, I, I think they were, uh, as I recall, Cisco went up about 500 percent in the last two years before its peak. And so there's one for you. Um, the, uh, the, the recent IPOs that uh, they all seem to double as soon as um, they list these companies. So, uh Airbnb and uh, Snowflake uh, in the cloud computing space. There's lots and lots of examples. But uh, when we do look back at the uh, dot coms, uh, the one big uh, difference between now and then is that the Federal Reserve raised uh, the Fed funds rate six times throughout 1999 and the beginning of uh, 2000. Uh, whereas to reiterate what I said, we're not looking for no interest rate increase until uh, 2024. Mark, uh, hi there, good morning. Wanted to also understand your outlook on the evaluations that the Indian markets command vis-a-vis -vis some of the other emerging markets. How do you see that really playing out? Do you think that expensive valuations could become a concern for us in the long run? Uh, no. I mean, when I look at India's uh, price uh, to uh, book or price to earnings uh, relative to its uh, average over the long term uh, versus uh, the emerging market asset class as a whole, it is um, around what the average is. So uh, that's simply because um, the, they all went up. And, and of course, the biggest one is China. Uh, China went up a lot over the last two years. And so um, on a relative basis, it doesn't strike me as uh, overvalued. Um, also relative to interest rates. Um, if you look at, uh, obviously, the 10-year government bond yield in India, uh, the average of, let's call it, the last uh, 10 years compared to what it is today, um, 
I don't remember what it is over the last 10 years on average, but clearly today it's it's much lower. Um, and that's the same for pretty much every country in the world with a few exceptions like Turkey and Argentina. But you have to look at stocks relative to bonds and, um, and actually uh, they don't look uh, mispriced when you do that. All right. And, you know, uh, given the fact that we're now seeing that catch up play within the broader markets too, the mid and the small caps have been at par, if not performing better with the frontliners. Do you think that now it's time for that broader market outperformance where we'll see, uh, you know, a wider, a wider gamut of stocks performing well? Uh, yes, essentially I do. And um, I think... Uh, the cyclical stocks uh, still have upside, um, not just in India, but globally. Uh, these are companies that um, have uh, not uh, performed well in, in the past few years. And, uh, and uh, we're looking for uh, the, the overall uh, earnings growth in the Sensex to be in excess of 25% this year and next year. Uh, it's very difficult to see the index going down uh, when you have that kind of earnings growth. In fact, I don't think there is a uh, period of time in the past uh, where that happened. Mark, we'll let you go on that note. Appreciate, as always, your time. Thank you so much for joining in and giving us a deeper insight as to what India looks like vis-a-vis -vis the emerging markets and where you see outperformance.